Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 and welcome back to Provence. Let's harvest some soybeans. Yeah, that's really all we've got going on on this map, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it's, uh, you know what I mean? It's about like that. So we'll get, whoa, clip through a wall as we do. Let's get this thing going. We're going to take our header over with the 6 Series. And, you know, I've been, I've been kind of, uh, I don't want to say studying. I don't want to say researching, but I really have been reflecting, thinking a lot about the size of the equipment that I use. I mean, I know I use equipment that's a little bit too big. And sometimes I even do that deliberately, like uh, cedars and planters right here. Way too big, but I wanted to use some of the horse equipment because the DLC was just released. It's a free DLC, but it was just released for FS19. Uh, via that aggravation map, whatever it is. So I wanted to throw that in there. But yeah, of course that's too big. Um, and we've got a 6, a 7, and an 8 on this map as far as tractors. Uh, the 6, not too big. The 7, maybe too big. The 8, probably too big. However, there are some other fields on the other side of this map that we could get to. Uh, we could buy them, and they would most certainly justify at least a seven, possibly an eight. So yeah, I use equipment that's a little bit too big, but I try not to use equipment that is like egregiously too big. Except in the case of like that horse equipment, if it's for a specific reason. But I'm curious what would happen, I mean, if we were to, if we were to farm a map like this with all three and four meter equipment, which I have done. Uh, Coldborough Park is an example. Cold, Coldborough Park in FS17, we were using three and four meter equipment, even on field nine. And I don't mind doing that at all. I'm just aware of the fact that for the videos, that can sometimes slow things down to the point where, I don't want to say it doesn't work, but it almost doesn't work. And I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that, you know, when I'm making these videos, I can't just do what I do when I play the game myself and uh, I'm gonna take another swing at that I'm not I'm not feeling I don't mind uh, you know brushing a curb but I don't want to like drive on the sidewalk there you go so my gameplay the style of gameplay in FS19 and FS17 I guess it changes a little bit in the videos I don't necessarily just want to do what I do as though I'm not recording that would be I think a little bit boring because I tend to play really really slow and methodical but at the same time I don't want every episode to just be uh, you know what I mean sort of contrived just doing doing something to do it now occasionally we'll do that we used the Anderson bio baler on old stream and that was just to test it I really don't like farming poplar it's not you know it's just not my thing but I wanted to check that piece of gear out and we did so in that case yeah sometimes we'll we'll do something just to do it but I'm trying to strike a balance between those two where I'm never doing things just to do them but I'm also not just gaming the way I game and thinking that that is somehow going to be like entertaining for you or enjoyable. It's a balance. It's a balance and I'm looking for it. I hope I find it because uh, I do want the channel to grow and I know the great thing about YouTube is it is instantly democratizing. If you make something people like, they will watch it. And if people are not watching your videos, I mean, you can say it's, well, you know, maybe people just haven't heard about me yet. Eh, it's YouTube. You know, it, they've, they've got that algorithm and they'll help people find you, you know, if, if your videos are resonating with people. So uh, I know when I hit that magic formula, the channel will grow. And, and that's the, the nice thing about it is it's sort of self-selecting. You know, if you're wondering what the formula is, how long should a video be or how fast, you know, what to put in it, that sort of thing. When your videos take off, you know you found it. Oh, there goes my voice. Hang on, let me have some coffee. Fantastic. Oh, iced cold brew. I love it. I love it. I'm in the American South. I'm not in the deep South. 
but I'm south enough that it gets very hot and very humid. Now, people in the south typically drink tea, iced tea, sweet tea, they call it. People in the south typically drink sweet tea. I'm not a fan of tea, either sweet or unsweetened, or uh, I know I've got some viewers from the UK. Uh, tea, I understand, means something completely different to you than it does to folks in the American South, but I'm not a particular fan of that kind of tea either. So I drink a lot of coffee, and in the summertime, when it gets hot, as it does in the American South, the idea of drinking hot coffee is, that ain't happening. So, fortunately, this, this uh, iced coffee cold brew thing that started a couple years ago caught me right in time, because now I can drink coffee all summer. It's fantastic. Well, I am a fan of a, I am a fan of a Red Bull. And I've noticed that Red Bull is really branching out. They've got a lot of new flavors that I've never seen before. Uh, they do, they're doing some like limited edition summertime releases and pear flavors and lemon lime, all kinds of stuff. It's fantastic. And one thing that I have not seen, I saw this years ago in Thailand. You know the little mini cans? Uh, imagine a, like the small Red Bull can, the tall skinny Red Bull can. Imagine that about half the height, so maybe three or four ounces. I saw this in Thailand. It was Red Bull coffee. And it was about as strong as, as you would think it would be. Like if, you know what I'm saying? Somebody said, this is, this is coffee made by Red Bull. And then you were like, well, is it strong? You know, you really wouldn't even need to ask that question. And of course it's strong. It's made by Red Bull. It's going to be ridiculously strong, and it was. Oh boy! But uh, it was it was good too. It had nice flavor, and uh, yeah, as you do. Right. I want to put this on a smart worker. What's what's our optimism? Uh, you know, we can be optimistic. Let's um, because we have a nice square line down here. Let's start in this other corner and send it around and see how we do. So uh, I'm gonna get this going. I'm gonna run up the hill and get in our seven. Oh, get in our seven, grab a tipper, and then I'm going to, I'm actually gonna fill it at the farm and take it down and sell it one time. One time. Open that up so that we're already selling soybeans because our goal is our goal is to get some animals on this farm. Right, here we go. Uh, do that. Put her in gear. Gotta go forward, come on. Put her in gear, and then we're going to put it on a worker. There we go. There we go. Let me slow it down a little bit. Yeah. And let's see how they do when they get to the end here. Doing great. Doing great. Good for you, little worker. And I'm actually going to hop back in here and close this menu out. Because for some reason, once that's active, it keeps the cursor on even when you get out of the vehicle or even when you get into another vehicle. Right, so we're going to run, run. Run, run as though we are being chased by the devil himself and uh, get in that seven series. So we'll sell some soybeans while our combine harvester is working. And then we will, uh, where's the street? Is it here? Yes. So we'll sell some soybeans while that combine harvester is working. We'll get back to it and hopefully, hopefully it will be just about full. I'm looking at the corner of my eye. We're at 10% on the combine harvester, so we should be okay. Assuming, assuming that it doesn't stop, because that could happen. And what did I say? We're going to get in the 7 series? Yeah, we're going to get in the 7 series. I might have said 6. I might have said 8. It's early here, and I'm not the most reliable person, even when I'm at my most reliable. Right. Here we go. Now, something I've noticed about this Krampa trailer, uh, this Krampa tipper, it's it's from the Mod Hub. It's from the Giants Mod Hub. So 
I find those mods are typically, uh, how do I don't want to say this, they may be a little mm, bland, almost, for lack of a better word. They may be a little bit bland. You know, they may not have, like, every single feature or bell and whistle, but they're, for the most part, pretty reliable, I think, because of the way Giants tests and, you know, they're pretty, pretty stringent, pretty strict. And, ah. Oh. The only thing is, I have not seen this updated since 1.3 came out. This came out before 1.3. Yeah, yeah, it did. This came out before 1.3, and I have not seen it updated, so it the physics can be a little a little weird. And I don't know if they changed anything as far as physics for 1.3. Or, you know, could be a lot of things. But it seems like it's acting up a little bit. Soybeans, here we go. And what's the best price for soybeans? We want to sell these gangsters. Uh, it's looking like, oh, <laughs> in French? I don't know, man. Silent Ease, Avev, Aveve. Oh, let's find that on the map. Uh, right there. Okay. So we're going to go down and to the right and then to the right again. Okay. So this is full. Close that up. We're at 24% on our combine harvester. Carefully. Yeah, it seems sometimes like the like the the physics of the trailer sort of overrule the physics of the tractor, if that makes sense. And it you'll see the trailer sort of controlling the tractor. I don't know how else to describe it. It's not a big deal. And I don't know. I mean, we've got we've got a mass adjustment running, the mass adjustment mod, so it could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of things, but Every now and then, it will be sort of obvious and distracting. So I just keep an eye on that. Right. Um, so we're going to go up here. And then it is, uh, I believe, across. We're going to cross this street here, this road, whatever you want to call it. We're going to cross this. And then I believe it's right up here on the on the right. Go. We're gonna need a little four-wheel drive for this. There we go. There we go. I am liking the vehicle extension mod. It's it's not uh, it's not the most discreet mod. It's not the most subtle. You you can sort of you know it's got a bit of a clunky feeling to it, but it does work. It does work. Uh, is this it right here? Top end cap. Uh, that's it. Fantastic. So we'll go right in here. We're looking for that's probably it. One would one would assume. And let's see what we get for twenty nine thousand liters of soybeans. So we'll come right in here. There we go. It's a nice mod. This Krampa trailer. It's a nice mod. I like it. And that I don't even want to call it a glitch. I don't know. Irregularity. 37 grand. Not bad. Not bad. So our, our whole goal is uh, just to get some animals going on this farm. So yeah, the trailer, uh, it's not a deal breaker. And it's, uh, it's really not even that big a deal. It's just something that catches my eye sometimes and, and um, can be a bit distracting. Right, so we'll turn around here. And depending on where our combine harvester is on that field, we may put it on lengths. If it's got a couple of trips around and we've got a nice headland to work with. Right. Um, see a car behind the tree? Can't hide from me. There you go. Out we go. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm liking this farm. I'm liking Provence. I'm, I'm a little... Uh, a little disappointed with old stream i i don't know man i don't think i'm that fickle it's a word you don't hear very often i don't think i'm that fickle but what happened with the with the wood chip bales which is really not the fault of the of the map maker you know when they made the map when they put it on the mod hub i don't know if the anderson dlc was available so really they would not have been able to put in 
to put in wood chips as a fill type, uh, wood chip bales as a fill type, they wouldn't have been able to put those in because they didn't exist yet. So it's not like it's not like I'm upset with the map maker or, or you know, it's it's literally not their fault. But at the same time, I've got all these bales, and unless I go in and, and edit the XML manually myself and put that fill type in, which is not that big a deal, I can do that, or I can just leave those bales dumped up at the sawmill. I mean, they're dumped neatly. They're in little stacks. But still, they're, they're just sitting on the map. Minimal impact on frame rate. It's a pretty fast map. Uh, as is Provence, by the way. Looking up in the corner, I see we're at 60 FPS. That's always nice. So, it, minimal impact on FPS, but I've said this in other videos. My OCD would know. My OCD would know that those bales were just sitting up there. And then the other possibility is the map maker will, will make a V2 or a V3 with whatever other changes they've made, and they'll put, put that fill type in, they'll include that fill type, and that's fantastic, but then will our save game work? And, you know, and I put all that together, and it's it just kind of soured me on the map. It's the weirdest thing, you know? And and I don't want to think that I'm that I'm super fickle or hard to please or you know i don't want to i don't want to be high maintenance i don't want to be a difficult gamer but at the same time a part of me is like yeah that just you know that just kind of did it for me so i think we're going to be on provence and um and the holzer map and i'm really making an effort not to spam you with the holzer map because i could I could. I'm. I'm definitely enjoying that map, and I mean, I could. I could do three episodes a week of that map, and it could be that maybe you want me to do that. But for now, uh, we're going to split it between Holter Map and Provence, and I think we're also going to, for lack of a better word, minimize our risk, <laughs> because I've been uh, ah, disappointed is too strong a word, but. Farming Simulator 19 has caught me out a couple times. It, it's uh, it's getting there, and it's definitely I feel like it's definitely made some some big steps forward with the the 1.3 patch. Definitely a much more playable game than it was for me anyway than it was on day one. But I I feel like this game still has some some evil surprises for me. I feel like I don't want to. You know, I'll trust it provisionally, but not entirely. So I think it'll be nice to have two maps going uh, in case something happens with one of them. Wow, my voice is just not cooperating today. So it goes. So it goes. Hard to believe I am in marketing and I'm uh, just constantly on the phone and talking to people and talking to clients and making presentations. My voice, for some reason, holds up better when I'm doing that than it does when I'm making these videos. I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, man. Check it out. There's like one weed. If you look to the right, there's like one weed that I missed when I was weeding. I can see it there. So, uh, so yeah, there's actually a lot of things about the Holzer map that I've discovered that I would love to tell you. But then I wouldn't have anything to talk about when I was doing a Holzer map video. So I'm going to hold off on that. But, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic map. It's really, really novel. It's really different in its approach to a lot of things. I don't think I've ever played another map like it either in 17 or 19. And I can include 15 in there as well. But I was really only on FS15 for a couple of months before 17 dropped. So definitely 19. Definitely 17. I mean, there was Hoff Bergman and... I don't know that that was a yeah that was a 17 map. Hofbergman is and was um, I would say that to me is is the classic German map and what I mean by that is it's got all this other stuff going on that I find is is absolutely unique to German maps and German map makers and in fact maybe that's a better way to say it that is something unique to German map makers because I suspect that if a German map maker ever made a, a British map, a UK map, not that they ever would, but if they did, I suspect that all those little gizmos and features would be in there as well. 
So I think it's less a product of the of the region that the map is based in than it is like the methodology of a German map maker. Right. So we're going to throw the pipe out. We're going to set the break. And we're going to go over here and get our 7 series and get this harvester emptied. And then uh, you want to do one more field? Let's do one more field. I don't think we need to really... Wow. Oh, wow. My voice is completely going away. Holy cow. Hang on for a second. I just had to grab my mute button to cough. And it was one of those coughs that it's like after the cough, then your voice will be back. And after the cough, I think my voice was worse. I don't know what is going on today. I do apologize. Need more coffee, perhaps. Uh, what was I talking about? What was I saying? One more field. I don't remember. There we go. Oh, you know what? That would be... Come over here. There's your screenshot. Beautiful. So, uh, yeah, that can stay there for the moment. So, put pipe in. Actually, I'm going to pull forward a little bit because the pipe, the angle changes as it comes in and I'm cautious about hitting the back of the trailer. Uh, you want to do a headland manually? Yeah, let's do that. So, uh, Hoff Bergman. Yeah, I think I might have been talking about Hoff Bergman. Maybe. Something, something. But the thing about Hoff Bergman that was really fascinating to me were all the little things you had to do and there was probably, hmm, I want to say there were maybe a dozen sort of unusual or unique tasks that were that were built into Hoff Bergman. And it was things like, um, well, you had to pick up the trash, which was fascinating. You could do it with a with a tipper. You could like huck the bags up into the back of a tipper, but there were actual garbage trucks that you could download that had a little, you know, whatever, compartment in the back, a little door, and you drive around in your orange truck, your your council truck, picking up the trash, take it to the dump, throw it in there, and I believe you got a credit for every bag you, you picked up. There were also uh, septic tanks in the houses, which was fascinating to me, and you had to drive around with a slurry tanker. Now that you could, th <laughs> this always bothered me because you could take that to, there were several processing facilities additional processing facilities on that map and you could take that to uh you could take that i mean they had it the fill type was just slurry and you could take that and process it and it would make uh a, i want to say bedding that you could use for your animals which was not straw it was bedding and then also, uh, maybe water. I I don't mm, I don't remember exactly, or maybe a, a digestate or some type of a a sprayable fertilizer. But that always bothered me because I know you can't really make human waste into any type of fertilizer. Uh, yeah, you don't you don't necessarily want to do that. So that was uh, so that was sort of novel. Um, I know you could, yeah. There were a lot of there were a lot of little little things that you had to do on the map. You had to buy water from the council office, and then it would show up on your farm. But you also had cisterns on your farm, and then there was another one up by the orchard that would fill with rain. So when it rained, you just got water for free. It sort of uh, I don't want to say appeared. Yeah, I mean, it didn't appear. It, it happened when it rained, so it, it collected, I guess is a good word for it. And, and those, little, those little details, um, I really like that in a German map. Now, those sorts of things are not present on the Holzer map, but it does have a, a really novel approach to, I don't want to say just to farming. I mean, to map making and to farming, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, the map itself is novel, but the the sort of farming practices that it guides you into or forces you into, I find that to be pretty novel as well. 
So I'm definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to playing that more. In fact, you know what? I just had an idea. I just had me a genuine idea because, yeah, because we want to get rid of all these soybeans today and the price is pretty good. There we go. There we go. We're going to let that worker keep workering. Let's go top this thing off because we've still got a bunch of soybeans in the in the bunker. Let's go top this off, then we'll come back and empty that thing once it finishes that field. Close it up. And I don't know if we'll have a full a full trailer of soybeans the second time, but we'll certainly be closer than if we just emptied the tank twice. Yeah, and then we'll call it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, uh, yeah, cover everything on my list, maybe, maybe. And then, uh, and then the next thing is, this is going to sound like I'm changing topics, but I'm not. I'm actually working through my, my mental list that I have in my head. And then the next thing we've got is Lancy Boy's map, uh, his Irish map, which I hope is released right around the mod contest. And that is in June, June or July. Now, the, the thing is, the, when you submit something to Giants, there's no guarantee that it will be accepted. So it's possible that if... And I'm not, you know, Lancy Boy is one of my favorite map makers ever, 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 ever. So I'm certainly not, when I say this, I'm not, you know, knocking his maps by any means. But if for some reason that map is rejected or is not completed in time for the mod contest and does not make it to the mod hub, then we'll just look for it on FSUK. And I would love to get that Irish map going. I have been... Just such a tremendous fan of Lancy Boy's work going back to Selby. I'm really looking forward to that map. All right, so I'm going to pull right up in here. Set, you know what? We won't center it. Let's do this. Let's be good uh, efficient farmers. So, as that, wow, that feels fast. So, let's pull forward here and spread the load out so we don't burn out a bearing in an axle. Right. Close that and get back down to our combine harvester, which is eh, coming up on half full. So yeah, we'll get we'll get animals going here now. Again, I don't want to talk a whole lot about Holzer Map while we're farming Provence because it kind of throws off the rhythm. But we've got sheep going on that map at the moment. And I guess we're going to bring in cows as well. I think that's the direction we're heading in. And so the question we have for Provence is, we don't have any animals right now. So what direction do we want to go in on this map for animals? Do we want to go with... I mean, sheep are easy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We were doing so good. Ah, it happens. It happens. Uh, sheep are easy. And we do have some grass. We own some grass already, so we could definitely get some grass bales and hay bales going for our sheep. But we also have, have four arable fields, so we could certainly throw one in as wheat and make us some um, make us some straw bales. But you know what I'm noticing about about FS seventeen, FS seventeen? No, FS nineteen. You know what I'm noticing about FS nineteen is with with buy bales in base game, I think there are a lot of times where it makes more sense, if you're going arable, it makes more sense to go with money crops and buy your straw bales rather than plant wheat and get a baler and everything just to get straw bales. We go here, we go here, and we go here, beautiful. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean? You can buy, and you may only need a couple to start with. You can buy a couple straw bales for 2,000 euro. And if you wanted to make those straw bales, those same straw bales, I mean, in this case, we already have a drill and we already have a combine harvester. We already have a lot of things. I think now we had a bale our first episode. We got rid of it because I, I have no need for it at the moment. But Basically, you can buy a couple straw bales for a whole lot less than it would cost to bring those straw bales out of the ground. And I feel like your, your, your delta 
I feel like your net is going to be higher to plant something like soybeans or canola, harvest them without a swath, obviously no swath for either one of those, but you know what I mean. Uh, no straw to bale, but you make so much more money with those crops that it's more cost effective to grow those crops, bring them in, sell them and buy a couple straw bales than to plant wheat or barley. So that's something to keep in mind if we want to bring cows onto this map. And we've got, we've got some grass as far as, you know, enough grass to make hay and silage to feed them with, to feed the cows, uh, maybe, maybe, but I think we might want to buy another field as well. You know, the other thing we can do, because we're going to have all animals on the Holzer map, it's just going to be animals and grass. You know, the other thing we can do is not have animals on this farm and buy a couple big fields by the BGA, which would be like field 27 and field 10, and plant those with corn, right? And just do corn for silage for money. You wanna do that? We can do that, yeah. In fact, yeah, I like that because we're gonna have so many animals and we're gonna be doing so much grass work on Holzer map. Yeah, there you go, it is decided. So we're not doing grass work on this map when all we're doing is grass work on Holzer. Let's do, uh, let's do corn for silage in those big fields. There you go. It's decided. It worked itself out. Fantastic. I love it. So we got, uh, we got this pass and it looks like about one and a half more passes. We'll empty this thing into the trailer. We'll take the trailer over and sell it and we'll call it. That'll be our episode for today. Fantastic. And then I'll bring those other two fields in off camera. We should be at, uh, we'll be at about 75,000 end of this episode. And when we're done with these two rows, I'll hop in the land menu and see how much those fields are. What else do we, I mean, we have a way to plant corn. And I suppose first time, first, uh, first harvest, we should probably rent a forage harvester. Yeah, let's do that first time. And, oh, you know what else we can do? Since we're renting a forage harvester anyway, mm, that's tricky. See, again, this is the economic modeling that, that I, I would love to have a spreadsheet to see some of this stuff. We can rent mowers because we do have that one grass field. We can rent a mower and throw that grass in as, as chaff as well, right? Since we don't need it to feed the animals. And we already have it, right? So why waste it? Why not throw it in there, throw it in the bunker at the BGA as well? But we would need to rent mowers to do that. You know, I think, I think that would probably be cost effective. I think it would. Uh, mowers aren't that terribly expensive to rent. And if we're going to be renting the forage harvester anyway, then we would rent, we'd rent the corn header, right? For, for our cornfields, naturally. And then we could rent the, uh, just the pickup header for our grass fields. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So we'll do, uh, in fact, while that's unloading, let me, let me check. Uh, we're talking about field 27 and field 10. How much is this? 98,000, not bad. 132,000, uh, not as, not bad. And 99,000. So we could start with, yeah, we'll start with field 27, which we may be, be able to pay cash for. Yeah, let's get this up out of here. Up out of here. And um, in fact, yeah, while we're making our run down to the, while we're making our run down to the, the place. Uh, this field is a little bit different in that it doesn't quite have an entrance like some of the other ones do. There's no real designated area, you know, an obvious place where you're supposed to pull in. Right, so we'll start that. We'll start that. That little area right there, if you're wondering. There you go. That little area right there, if you're wondering, I did have a worker plant this field and that's where they stopped to avoid that tree. As you do. So we're at 52, yeah, we should be at 75. By the time we get those other two fields in, I suspect we'll be able to pay cash for that field and not have to mess with a loan. 
Oh, and look at this, 98%. That could not have worked out better. Could not have worked out better. That's fantastic. So we'll take this up and sell it. And um, what did we get last time? 37. So that'll put us at 89,000. Okay. That's, that's basically it right there. We will have no problem paying cash for that field. And I believe that we will have enough enough left over in the ledger to cover the rental on our forage harvester. And, and in fact, we'll look at that as well when we're done here, just to see. And if, you know, if we had to, we could borrow a little bit of money to rent that forage harvester. That would be, I would have no problem doing that because you make so much money from silage anyway. So, yeah, okay, this all worked out. This all worked out and I'm glad we have a plan now. You know, I do wanna make videos that, that you have a reason to watch. You know, I, I, I want to make, I want to make videos that are interesting and entertaining enough that you watch them to the end and, and you're curious how they turn out and, you know, the things that I do make sense. And I do have, see those markers there. I do have, I want to say, I do have the interactive markers turned off. Yeah, the, those are hard coded into the map. I have them turned off in the options. Right. How'd we do? 89,000. Beautiful. There you go. So we need another 10 grand and we're good to go. Uh, what was I going to look at? I was going to look at um, rental for a forage harvester. Moment, please. So we go here. We go here. We go here. And if we want to lease that, 10 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Okay, fantastic. You want to call it? Let's call it. We'll hop out here. Make this a little prettier. There you go. Like so. Like so. Like so. Like so. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 19 from Provence. I will see you next time. Take care now.